Hey guys, for a second video of the night, I want to uh, give a brief rundown of my takeaways from day two of the Senior Bowl. For those of you wondering, I'm not at the Senior Bowl. I was watching on television like most of you. I considered buying tickets to the actual game to go down this year, but it kind of gotten in the way of my job. And frankly, if I wasn't going down for the practices, it just wouldn't have been worth it. Most of the, what we learn about players comes from the practices. And I just don't have the affiliation right now to get uh, media access in the past I did but but not right now so uh, I was watching from home like most of you but there were some takeaways I just want to cover and hopefully I get this under 10 minutes just to give you a heads up about some players who I liked who I thought really improved their draft stock and some players who you know it didn't look so good so just to set the setting for you Mobile Alabama today rainy probably a little cold and look like there was a mist coming down throughout the entire day so, not fantastic conditions for, for camera work, first of all. Uh, the camera lenses currently, or always had water on them, seemingly. Uh, but, aside from the blurry pictures, it was not a great day for quarterbacks. Not a great day for a lot of the receivers in the earlier period as well, uh, because of the rain. And that was the national team that was practicing first. They're being coached by the New York Jets coaching staff. Uh, and they seem to struggle quite a bit, especially the quarterbacks. All three of the quarterbacks to me did not look good today uh, from the national team. Which is kind of a shame because I heard a lot of good things about Carson Strong after the first day. I heard Kenny Pickett was pretty steady. And it was just not that good for them today. And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the American team, which is coached by the Detroit Lions coaching staff, practiced second in a later window. And it wasn't raining as hard. And the quarterbacks for that group seemed to perform a lot better. Uh, but immediately, first player I want to talk about, someone in the early window, Trey McBride, tight end for Colorado State. He is my tight end one in this class, and he's number 50 on my top 300 big board that recently released ahead of the Senior Bowl. Uh, he had an excellent rep against Jalen Petrie, who's a first house safety for Baylor. Uh, excellent contested catch over his head. I don't think he had any drops today that I saw, at least, and there were a lot of our players who were having drop issues because the ball was wet and the surface was wet. Uh, I thought McBride had several really good blocks. He seems to be, he's not like a super tall guy, but he seems to have a lot of uh, sand in his pants and really good <laughs> to use a to use a scout term. He has a lot of sand in his pants. He's hard to move. He seems to really stack up well against uh, edge rushers. He had a great connection with Kenny Pickett today. They were connecting actually quite a bit in drills and even in uh, the team practices. So it looked really good for them uh, playing together. And I think I could see McBride after if he continues this pattern. I could see McBride sneaking into the first round of the draft. He looked that good. Uh, stock down Kenny Pickett. He's my QB1 at number 25 overall on my big board. He started out fairly accurate in the in the early morning, or at least at the beginning of the practice, uh, and he got less and less accurate throughout the day. A lot of overthrows. He muffed a snap under center, which is something they were focusing on heavily today, guys, getting under center. Cause that's not something you're always asked to do in college football. Uh, I think today's performance will only create more questions about Kenny Pickett's hand size and whether it will work in cold weather conditions or in rainy conditions. And I didn't think Pickett was getting enough depth on his first step coming out from under center. Uh, that's an issue for all these guys pretty much. You have to get more depth when you take a snap under center because the defensive tackles and guys are going to be pushing that line immediately back into you. Uh, that's not something you experience when you're taking shotgun snaps, which most of these guys did in college. Uh, stock up Trevor Penning, offensive tackle Northern Iowa. He's my OT4 and number 20 on my big board. He's a ferocious player. I think it's almost like a performance at times watching him do it. Uh, I wonder sometimes how realistic it is, but he seems to really be about that life. He finished the block almost hitting a guy into a goal in the goalpost today uh, in the one-on-ones. He's always looking for extra action after every rub. He's constantly getting guys' faces, his jaw with them. Uh, total competitor, and he completely just engulfed Tyreek Smith, the edge rusher from Ohio State today. Like Absolutely took him out of the play on a one-on-one -on -one situation where Smith had nowhere to go, and I think Penny was actually guiding him at that point, basically pushing him wherever he wanted to. Uh, stuck down Carson Strong, QB from Nevada. He's my QB4, number 56 overall on my board. Lots of head dropping and head shaking today from him because he just was not completing passes that well. I mean, he, he missed a ton of throws. Most of them were placed too high. Uh, clearly, the weather hurt his play today. Yeah, near disaster throw in the chain drills where he basically threw it and two defenders were in the area and he didn't have a receiver that I could see uh, in, the, in the shot. So it was a really bad throw that could have been intercepted. And I thought his footwork today was fairly inconsistent. Uh, really high riser today. Jermaine Johnson, the second from Florida State. He's an edge rusher. He's my edge eight, number 34 on the board. 
after today, I'm going to put him probably closer to the high 20s at this point. He looked fantastic. He had more bend than I expected, and he's got a lightning quick get off to get around the edges. His speed to power is lethal, combined with his good hand usage. Uh, he's quick to win the tackle side side shoulder and turn the corner to get to the quarterback. He's capable of running around the tackle, as I already mentioned, but he's also pretty good at running through them. And I think he'll easily be a first round pick after what I saw today, as long as he keeps it up for the rest of the week. Uh, stock down Darian Kennard. I have listed his offensive tackle on my big board. He's my OT7, number 54 on my big board. I no longer view him as an offensive tackle if he continues playing this way. It looked more like he'll have to play guard. Uh, clearly, he has the physical potential to be a really good player, but in pure passing situations and when he's not flowing downhill in the running game, there's some issues. His hands are low and frequently don't activate quick enough. His footwork looks slow to react today. And he got destroyed uh, playing in guard on a spin move by Eric Johnson, number 99, for the defense uh, today. So he got blown up pretty bad on that play. On the flip side, Stock is pointing directly up for Perry on Winfrey. He's my interior defensive lineman, number 5, number 117 on my board. Uh, after today, if he continues playing this way, he'll probably crack my top 70, if not my top 60 on my next board. He looked unblockable, and he really stood out. Even compared to guys like Travis Jones from UConn, uh, Winfrey looked incredible. Like He was next-level kind of player today. Uh, completely separated himself from the yard interior defensive lineman. An explosive first step. He bounced uh, offensive line back with initial contact. He just looked unblockable. Stocked down Disman Ritter, which, like I said, all the national team QBs struggled today. Uh, Ritter was consistently inaccurate with ball placement. Regularly had high attempts where he just throwing the ball too high. Uh, tossed a short pass he had basically its air into the dirt instead of the running back. And he still might have had the best practice in national team's quarterbacks just because the R2 were that bad. Uh, Ritter is my QB6, number 73 on my board. Stuck up Devontae White, interior defense lineman for Georgia. He's my interior defense lineman number two. Right behind Jordan Davis, and number 41 overall on my board. Uh, naturally quick enough that I think he can be an edge rusher, frankly, just based on pure speed, what I saw today. Uh, above average power is really good when mixed with his hands usage. Uh, I think he does a good job combining those two things together. I think he can beat offensive lineman to either shoulder on the outside or inside. Uh, he showed that in practice today. I think he might have only lost one rep in practice to someone who I'll talk about in a brief moment, I believe. Uh, Ed Ingram from LSU stoned, like stoned walled him in one rep. But other than that, why I think won almost every rep on the one-on-ones and made it quite a bit of an impact in the actual practice. Uh, stuck down Andrew Stuber. I had him listed as offense tackle 16, uh, number 156 on my board. I, I'm going to be viewing him as a guard moving forward most likely. He looked very stiff. He was slow to react and too upright in his stance. Uh, routinely got beat in the one-on-ones at guard and at tackle. Uh, defenders beat him to the spot several times. Uh, and like I said, I think I'll have to play guard at the next level. Stock up Maja Sanders, edge rusher for Cincinnati. He's my edge 14, number 48 on my board, which I actually think is still pretty accurate even after today. Uh, Maja Sanders, great speed to power on his rushes. He's, he's got an explosive first step, puts tackles at an immediate disadvantage with its speed. Uh, blew up a running play in the team drills. I thought was great in the backfield. He got there very quickly. And Yari's a really good spin move. I would like him. I would like to see him use more moves than the R just to spin. He used the spin twice and got a better of an offensive tackle one time, but he got stoned the second time because he used the same move back to back pretty much. Uh, I stuck down Cole Strange, interior offensive lineman for Chattanooga. He's my interior offensive lineman number fifteen, number one seventy two on my board. And he's here because he had high variance in reps. Like he had some really good ones where he just stopped the defender dead in his tracks. And some other ones where he literally got almost knocked over by a spin move. He might got put flat on his butt one time. He just did not have consistency. And frankly, even if he took rid of, even if he got rid of like the high level plays and just had like a middle ground between the good and the bad, yeah, it would probably be better for his draft stock than what he's doing right now. Stock up Logan Hall. Edge from Houston. I do view him as an edge. He's my edge 13, number 47 on my board. He had a steady amount of wins throughout the day. No individual wins stood out to me, but overall, he was consistently getting wins. He packs a lot of uh, he packs the power of an interior defensive lineman, but he's got the hands and speed of an edge rusher, which is where, which is where I think he'll play uh, in the NFL with the ability to reduce inside if he has to. He was a disruptive force in team drills and created movement with ease in the one-on-ones. And I'm just going to skip around a little bit because I want to finish this up. I don't want to keep you guys for too long. I know most of you probably click off before we get to this point in the video anyways. Uh, stock down Jake Ferguson, tight end for Wisconsin. My tight end 10, number 166 on my board. 
He got pushed around in several blocking assignments today. He dropped a pass against the air early on the practice. Again, that weather coming into effect for the national team. Stuck up Zion Johnson, interior offensive lineman for Boston College. My interior offensive lineman number three and my number 43 prospect. Excellent display of versatility today playing center. He played almost entirely guard in college. Uh, he looked more technically refined than any of the other interior offensive linemen I saw in the morning practice. And he stayed late after practice to get some extra reps at shotgun snaps, which is something, again, he didn't have to do in college because he played mostly guard. Uh, stuck down Daniel Bellinger, tight end for San Diego State. He was not ranked on the latest big board, uh, but he got absolutely worked in one once by Kingsley and Nagbury, and then by Amari Barno in the 8 on 8 drills. So uh, don't I don't see him holding up in blocking assignments. And Nagbury is one of the slighter guys who is, has legitimate uh, edge rusher size or defensive end size. He's 260, somewhere in that range, but he's still kind of a slighter dude for the position. And Amari Barno is a player who will be considered undersized in an edge rusher, and he just worked uh, Bellinger entirely. So I don't think he offers much as, as a block at this point if both those guys beat him so poorly. And then the last guy, stock up Ed Ingram, interior offensive lineman for LSU, my interior offensive lineman number seven, number 111 on my board, which I think is still about right for him. Uh, as I said, he stonewalled Devontae White in a one-on-one -on -one rep, absolutely stopped him dead in his tracks, and he was kind of standing up when he did, too. He wasn't even really dropping his anchor and sinking down. He kind of just stood up and stopped Devontae White, and White was clearly uh, clearly very peeved with the outcome of that rep. I think Ingram displayed exceptional play strength against a deep interior defense line group. Uh, and this entire defense line class, frankly, at the Senior Bowl has been really deep and played fairly fantastic so far uh, through, the through the past two days of the Senior Bowl. Those are my notes. Uh, if you want to see them and read them for yourself, I'll leave a link to my article in the description that has the full type up, uh, just kind of like a bolt list for each of these players, what I liked, what I didn't like. It's mostly the stuff I said in the video, but you can go check that out and probably be faster and listen to me in the future. And I hope to do more draft videos like this later. And hopefully this one will do well. But for now, guys, good night. Talk to you all tomorrow.